What do you get when you combine Quantum Leap with Seven Days and throw in a bit of The Matrix? A surprisingly original techno thriller, actually. This is Movie Night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. On tonight's episode, we'll be reviewing the brand new film, which was just released nationwide yesterday, Source Code. Jake Gyllenhaal stars as Army veteran Captain Coulter Stevens, who awakes after a massive explosion on a train to discover that he has actually been recruited by the U.S. government for a time travel style mission, reliving the last eight minutes of someone else's life in hopes of finding the terrorist bomber responsible for their death and the explosion on the train. Despite his Swiss cheese memory and confusion of his whereabouts, Stevens must continually revisit these traumatic eight minutes and attempt to piece together the puzzle before the terrorist strikes again in the real world. Michelle Monaghan plays the lovely woman opposite Stevens' train riding counterpart, a character we only really get to see in small eight minute bursts, but one whose charisma and personality quickly shines through. Her relationship with Stevens, who is only inhabiting the body of someone else, is one that develops with just the right amount of charm and subtlety over the course of the 93 minute film. Vera Farmiga and Jeffrey Wright play the government specialists in the real world, who besides providing the audience with nearly all of the exposition about the plot, also anchor the film with a much needed sense of normalcy and an element of consequence to the bizarre time-shifting action we're witness to. Source Code is a rare movie for Hollywood, as it is completely original in every way, not a sequel or an adaptation or a reboot, or even based off of a book. Just a brand new, thought-provoking story from writer Ben Ripley. That's not to say, however, that this movie isn't familiar at times, with many elements feeling similar to Seven Days and Quantum Leap, two sci-fi television shows from the 1990s that also featured time-traveling elements. In fact, Source Code has an almost over-the-top homage to the classic sci-fi series Quantum Leap, the first when Steven sees his counterpart's face in the mirror for the first time and does a double take. And the second comes when the audience discovers the small voice-only role of Stevens' father was provided by Quantum Leap star Scott Bakula himself. For fans of time travel like me, it was a nice touch. Source Code is aware of its predecessors, but it's careful to make its own name for itself. On the technical side of things, the film opens with beautiful landscape shots of Chicago and its suburbs, and luckily the cinematography remains consistent throughout going hand-in-hand -hand with some excellent editing that never feels obtrusive or boring. Gyllenhaal is excellent in the lead role, who is literally on screen in nearly every scene, showcasing just the right amount of determination in the face of confusion for the audience to relate to his temporal escapades. Coming off the success of 2009's Moon, director Duncan Jones has crafted a refreshingly intelligent film, one that remains intriguing until the final scene. Besides being slightly familiar, my only real complaint about Source Code is the uncharacteristic happy ending. Departing from its serious and reflective tone in the final minutes to do a complete 180, Source Code goes on to give the audience a feel-good ending that isn't actually that emotionally satisfying. It's not disappointing per se, but it's an unwelcome mood change to cap off an otherwise splendid feature. Source Code. Thought-provoking and truly original. Well, that was my review. Now let's read some of yours. Now let's go ahead and rate source code on the rate matic An 8 and an 8. This film loses its points for its weak ending, but definitely gains praise for its original plot and unique story. I thought it was great. Obviously, this film is brand new, so not many of you had a chance to vote yet, but those that did really enjoyed the film. But you agreed the ending wasn't so awesome. You also scored it a great. Only one review in today's episode, so now let's take a look at what's currently playing in theaters with some tweet critiques. Remember, if you're going to the movies this weekend, make sure to submit your Twitter reviews using the JPMN hashtag to have it featured on an upcoming episode. Based on your suggestions from Facebook and Twitter, next week we'll be reviewing video game movies, the first of which is Super Mario Brothers, the original granddaddy of them all from 1993. The second film is 2001's Laura Croft Tomb Raider. As always, I encourage you to buy, rent, or download these films before next week's episode, and let me know what you think about them by voting in the polls below or by leaving me a comment review. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here next Friday.